Buyer Beware, buying model steam engines via a photograph on the internet, part 2, knowing what to look for. This is a nondescript engine that was bought off the internet, what's wrong with this? Nothing really, it looks like it's quite well made. All of the studs are very equidistant around the cylinder head. The thing I spotted immediately was the fact that someone has had a pair of pliers on the copper exhaust pipe, and one of the studs on the steam chest sticks out a bit more than the other. The gland nut isn't well finished, and the flywheel is a bit rusty. Also, the eccentric strap is in one piece, it's not really adjustable. All those observations were made from the image that you see on screen at the moment. So this engine is okay, a bit nondescript, but it's okay. If you watch my videos regularly, you should recognise this one. This is a Bassett Loke tangy type of engine. In the full size, there were many variations on this engine. But this is a common layout with the cylinder and the crosshead guide and the main bearing being just one casting. And this engine looks okay. And it is okay. Now for something completely different. This engine is the same as the previous one. And I'm currently rebuilding it as part of a tutorial series about rebuilding horrible old steam engines. So far I've had to make a new connecting rod, crosshead, piston rod and piston. And I almost forgot a crank pin. On this engine, the crank pin's throw on the crank web is wrong, so I'm going to make a new crank web and a new crankshaft while I'm at it. In the first episode of this short series, I showed these. They are a pair of steam chests and one steam chest cover, complete with a slightly out of focus cylinder in the background, and these are very well made. Look at how accurately the holes in the steam chest covers are drilled. And the holes in these covers are a perfect match for the ones in the steam chest. Whenever I see a model steam engine in a photograph, this is the first thing that I look for. Nothing looks worse on a steam engine than nuts on studs in holes that are drilled in the wrong place. Look at this cylinder. The holes in the corners are definitely drilled in the right place, as are the holes at the front and rear of the cylinder block into which studs are fitted that hold the cylinder covers in place. Forgetting the fact that this is scrap because the ports are drilled in the wrong place, as you can see once again from this clip, this cylinder is in my opinion scrap, and even though the internal parts of the engine are not visible on the photograph, but this, which is the exhaust pipe assembly, would have been very visible on the photograph. And that would say to me, aha, the engine looks quite well made, all the studs line up okay, the machining standard looks good from the photographs. So why is the piping so horrible? An educated guess, two or more persons worked on this engine, and the first one was good, but the rest weren't. Wheel the next one in. This engine looks to be a bit of an antique, although not all of the parts of it are antique. Most of it probably is. I wonder if it runs. Well, it does run. Steam engines are possibly the only engine I can think of that will run successfully when they're in this condition. It does have a tiny bit of play in the main bearings. This engine looks to me to be a Bitzer engine. The term Bitzer means made out of bits and pieces. There's a lot of play in the connecting rod, but I think the connecting rod and the crosshead and the cylinders and the valves are possibly from the original engine. There's quite a lot of play in the big end brasses. Not too much play in the small end, but there's play in everything around the small end. I think just as an experiment, I will adjust the position of the crosshead guides to make them a little bit tighter fit on the crosshead itself. This nut is on a stud that must be bolted in from underneath because it's just spinning free. The mounting base for this engine is made from quite thin sheet metal, and it's not of the same vintage as the parts that are sat upon it. The two U section pieces of sheet metal have been welded together with a couple of pieces of tube. I would have thought that an engine of this type should be sat on a cast iron base, but occasionally engines like this were just screwed to a wooden base, so maybe that just got lost or rotted away. Right, I've tightened up the crosshead as much as I dare, and I'm continuing to do so with the engine running, just so I know when it starts to get too tight because the tone of the engine will change. And now, as you can clearly hear, something is happening. The crosshead guides are a little bit too tight. And 
And here's another engine. This is also a Bitzer engine. It's either antique or just an apprentice piece, but it looks like bits and pieces of an apprentice piece to me. OK, so the big ends are fixable and the main bearings are fixable. What about the flywheel? This is not the original flywheel and this is not the original pulley. They're just nowhere near the diameter of the crankshaft. And the base isn't square, it rattles about on my bench. When I fed some compressed air into the engine, it never even tried to move, it just sat there like you see it at the moment. So this is fixable, but it would be expensive. And is it really worth it? In the darkest recesses of my workshop lurk a lot of engines in a cardboard box. They all belong to the same customer, and I've taken some out of the box to try. As you can see, there are still plenty left. So what about this nicely made little engine that I showed at the beginning, with the plier marks on the exhaust pipe? Does it run? Uh, no. The compressed air is leaking a bit, I'm not getting a very good seal on the tap, the tap is open, so really the engine should run. It's trying, but it's not going to run. And once again, this engine requires work too, and I don't know what it's like inside. Here's a good looking little engine, maybe this will run. At first glance, it looks to be quite well made. Good attention to detail, and all the parts seem to be in order. Before I run any engine, I always give them a bit of an oiling. This one runs. Let's have a close look at it. This photographs very well from every angle. It's a bit grubby, it's a bit old, but that's not a big problem. Everything looks okay. Although not visible in a single frame static photograph, in a moving picture you can see the play in the eccentric rod. It's not a big problem at all. It wants fixing just to make the engine run a little more quietly. Without taking it apart, I can't tell whether there's enough material on the eccentric rod to bush it or not. There's a lot of side play on the crankshaft. This is very common and really not much to worry about. What would have been visible in the photograph, I assume, is the bent valve. It depends on the angle at which it was photographed. In my opinion, this engine would possibly be worth a rebuild. Or it could be left just as it is if you like the sound of a pneumatic drill. Running steam engines on my soundboard does make a difference. When I lift the engine off the soundboard, it gets a lot quieter. But I need to know where all the knocking's coming from. And a soundboard is the way to go, I think. It's got quite an interesting sound in slow motion. So my verdict on this engine is it's OK. Congratulations to the good builder who made it. All it needs is a bit of repair because it's worn. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.